Good morning, everyone. We're gonna start the day with some gelato. Now, gelato is a cross between uh, sunset sherbet and thin mint cookies. It's been known to be really good for people that suffer from bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is the old manic depression. You kind of familiar with it, the ups and downs, it's like someone who's basically doing cocaine and then not doing cocaine. <laughs> that's basically it, right? And that's bipolar disorder. And um, the issue is, is that bipolar disorder is often caused by a traumatic event in a person's life back when they were a child. So by the time that they have the bipolar disorder or a manifestation of that, like depression or anxiety or ADHD of some sort, they, they, they don't realize that the source of it was some traumatic event that happened a long time ago because they've coped with it and then it just built up over time. They've built up all these mechanisms to deal with it. The way a child would deal with something super, super violent or tragic that happened in a child's life if you can imagine a child seeing that, they would really just seem like they were unaffected. They would probably just be playing with their doll while all this tragedy was happening around them. That's because the child has a very good way of just dealing with it. They just kind of shut it out. But they do know what's happening and they do feel it. They're just not feeling it the way an adult feels it like right instantly. Um, and that's what happens to a lot of us. So by the time we're adults, that kind of playing with the doll while this tragedy is happening around, well, that's the thing we got to deal with. And for a lot of us, the tragedy might be just this, might be something that just seems really like not a big deal. It seems like it's not, like when you think about it, like, oh, that can't be it. You know, that doesn't bother me. I'm not bothered by that. I'm not bothered by my parents being divorced. That doesn't bother me. Well, yeah, it doesn't bother you now. You're 30 years old. But when you were a child, it might have been very, very, very upsetting to you to see the two people that you love the most scream and hate each other for years and then split up as the resolution. That, might, that whole process might have been very, very traumatic for you, but you didn't realize it. And plus, everyone was doing it in the 90s. So why, you know, why should you, you know, be affected by that? And well, that's just one example. You know, my trauma is a little different. My parents are still married, so I'm just kind of just giving it a, kind of an arbitrary thing that I've observed. Now, the way I've dealt with my trauma, the way I've dealt with my bipolar disorder, my depression, is through marijuana. I learned that smoking marijuana and not drinking alcohol and smoking marijuana, but smoking medical marijuana, like when you wake up in the morning and in, in the afternoon, and the night, you know, to deal with the medicine, the, the, the psychological stuff, that you start to feel better. That you start to open up channels and blocks of things that maybe in the past were too afraid to look at. That's what this medicine has done for me. Let's call it therapy. That's what this therapy has done for me. Now, I've had a lot of therapy. I mean, I've probably had more therapy than some people have been therapists. And I've seen some of the best doctors and I it, and I've also know the the clinicalness behind it because when you start to see the patterns, you kind of hear what they say, and but you get the idea of where they go with it. It's kind of all general general practice. Well, it's limited in what it can do. It can't go into your brain and un unblock it. That's what that's what psychiatry does. Now I've seen psychiatrists too. Those are the ones that prescribe me all sorts of pharmaceuticals. I've been on Depakote. I've been on, so it starts with an R. I want to say Ritalin, but it's not the speedy one. It's something else. It's right at, I don't know. It was, they had me on five medications at one point. I know one of them was Valium. <laughs> I know that because that was the one I liked the most. But the point is, is that those did not solve the problem. What they did was they masked the symptoms so that I seemed more normal and could function more. Kind of like that child who plays with the doll when there's tragedies going around. That's what the pharmaceuticals attempted to do. What this medicine does is allows me to, well, let's try it out without any further ado. So this is the gelato. It's very, very good for um, bipolar disorder, uh, depression, fibromyalgia, and also for PTSD. So I use this for my PTSD and that's how I start my day. Now it's 6 a.m. or a little after 6 a.m. here, so it's a little late for me. I, I, I wake up around 2.30, 3 o'clock, start writing, reading, whatever.
<sighs> Been a while since I did one sitting down. <clears throat> and it might seem a little weird to you to take medicine in the form of a bomb. But how much weirder is it to stick a, a needle in your arm? You know, or have the doctors stick poke things in you. I mean, all that stuff is really weird. This is actually very healthy. This is just like an inhaler. <coughs> so anyways, you know, deal with your, deal with your emotions. <coughs> and, you know, I know it's hard throughout the day, especially if you're younger than me, because, you know, you're focused on making the money. You gotta, you gotta kind of get to where you're getting. And I get that. You gotta prove yourself. And what I'm saying though, is that maybe, what, maybe down the road, this could be useful information for you or for those of you who have been you know just cruising 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 but then like why the fuck is Jedi Rich over there just enjoying himself and I seem to be working my ass off all the time and he doesn't have any money he doesn't have anything going on but he doesn't seem to be worried but I have all this money and I'm depressed as fuck I'm not even enjoying myself and I'm getting fatter every year even though I'm running twice as fast well, eventually you're gonna crash and tire out and then you can come talk to me, but what I'm saying, it might look a little weird, but hey, I'm here for you. If you have any questions, please DM, leave a comment below. 9-11's coming up. Uh, I was living here in, in New York City, not too far from the World Trade Center when that happened, and that and that was very traumatic to me as well. It, I keep saying the PTSD from the World Trade Center, and, and I wanna make sure that you all understand. I wasn't in the World Trade Center. I was next to it. But the thing is, is that the people that survive have things happen to them. Like, well, some people, if they've lost people in the, obviously, but in the case where, let's say I lost my job as a result of 9-11 and I was in Manhattan. <clears throat> that felt really scary to me. It felt really abandoned. And when I lost my job, guess what happened? I learned out, I learned that my girlfriend really wasn't that into me. She was more into me when I had the job. And that was kind of mind blowing. I was 33, I was like, I didn't really think that, I mean, I knew that that kind of existed, but I didn't think that was my story. I thought that I had picked someone <coughs> who was genuine. But no, I had it. I picked someone just like everybody else that just was interested in money. And for me, that seems weird because see, I grew up with money. We weren't real showy money people, you know? So my dad didn't spend a lot of time telling us, hey, you know, showing off all, we didn't, we're, we had a hardware store. My dad drove a pickup, <laughs> you know what I mean? But we had a lot of money. I just didn't really realize it because that wasn't an emphasis to us. But I was taught that there are some people in this world that only are interested in you for your money. And so that's what I learned growing up. It took a long time, but eventually, you know, you get through all that. Anyways, Jenny Joy's up and running around, so it's kind of time to end the blog here. And then my girlfriend left, and then, and then my friends, you know, of course I was depressed and I was maybe acting a little erratic, but then when you are around a lot of wealthy people, wealthy friends and family, they have expectations of how you're supposed to act, what you're supposed to do and say. But if you're off that, man, you would not believe how quickly they don't want anything to do with you. They're afraid of what's gonna to happen to their reputation, what people think of them. And, and you know, so it's kind of like the Big Brother house or, or the Great Gatsby, you, you get kicked out immediately when you don't walk in line. Oh, there's Jay Joy, she's back. So, um, so I'm gonna kind of wrap it up here. It's been a really good blog. Thanks for watching, you guys. And that's kind of the blog for today. Now, I don't know why I was sitting the whole time, <laughs> but I was. You show the little shorties how you pump and take the dump. Not, not to death. I'm, I'm not impressed. I'm not I'm amused. I'm not confused. I'm not to do. I'm a grown man business. I'm not in school. Put your hand down, youngin. This is not for you. I'm my jail, my feet with the Kanye yo. Your name on the marquee, your name off the payroll. Style fresh. Like I'm still a day yo, and it's been like that since the day yo. On more time than a rolling or second. Step on deck your neck or do what I say so. Get up or get out, get down and lay down. The same, the same, the same, the same. Old Jedi, Black Jedi, Black Jedi, Black Jedi. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out. Check it out. Check it out.
Slim Cast the big shadow. Cherokee red to shoot the long arrow. Got, Got more, more skill, skill, more aim, and more ammo. You can get it all from a big or small barrel like Hail Mary, full of grace. Jedi, come and shoot up the place and make you pull up your face to death. I pull out the ace from the jungles of the Empire State where there ain't no escape. Four, seven. Seven. seven one eight and that's like every night every day from the place that i settle and sing to the state so i'm collecting my pain blast off and i'm back to the cave hold it down for my family straight represent in a family way football not for amateur play being lost is an amateur state before the press and the camera's raised like a long time out of the way you understand i'm straight yeah yeah no doubt excellence And that's what it is, you see. 